Hello children I welcome you all to session 3 and today we will learn about an interesting chapter from geography Children just look around you you will find so many object for example you may see water vegetables furniture electricity or vehicles so many things right now tell me what is that one thing that is common in these things well that is utility or usability let me clear this for you for example your online classes to watch your online class videos what do you need you need a mobile or a laptop or a desktop right and you need to charge these devices regularly right so what do you need to charge you need electricity so here we are using the electricity to fulfill our need right so anything on the earth that satisfies human needs or that fulfill human needs are called resources in other words we can say all natural elements on the earth that are essential for the survival of human beings and which fulfill human needs are called resources nature has gifted us with variety of resources like water soil and minerals but they had no value do you know why because they were not in use once when the human started using it to fulfill the needs it added a value to it and it become a resource let me give you a simple example that we have taken electricity as the example before right when the electricity is not in use it is not a resource but when human turns electricity to fulfill the needs and demands it will turn to resource then how can we add value to electricity this is very simple we all know that electricity is not free we have to pay the electricity bill and when we pay the bill it will add the economic value to electricity so now we have learned what are resources in this chapter we will learn about the different types of resources and how to use them in a planned and judicious manner by avoiding wastage and overuse generally there are three types of resources the first one is natural resources second one is human made resources and the third one is human resources but in today's session let's learn only about one resource that is natural resources natural resources what are these as the name suggest these are the materials that we get directly from the nature and we are using it without much modification for example we get air water minerals soils and land from the nature and without doing any modification we are using it as it is and we are fulfilling our day to day needs these natural resources can be classified under four categories they are on the basis of origin availability level of development and distribution let us see the first one that is on the basis of origin here the natural resources are further divided into biotic and abiotic resources so what are biotic resources here the word bio means life so we can say whatever resources that have life in it means all the living components of the environment is called as biotic resources for example plants animals birds and human beings comes under the biotic resources and abiotic resources means that include all the non living components of the environment which doesn't have life for example land water air and sunlight and the second one is on the basis of availability here this is also further divided into renewable and non renewable resources so what do you mean by renewable resources these are the resources which are unlimited and are replenished or renewed by the environment over a short period of time for example we can say water 
If the water dries up, we will get the water back within short period in the form of rain or storm water. Solar energy and wind energy are some other examples of renewable resources. We can use these resources unlimitedly. For example, you may use solar energy or wind energy for 30 to 40 years, but still it will not get exhausted. How is it possible? Because they regenerate the energy themselves and have continuous supply. So, these can be renewed by the environment and that is why they are called renewable resources. Then what do you mean by non-renewable resources? These are the resources which are limited in supply and cannot be renewed in a short period of time. Children, do you know why it cannot be renewed in a short period of time? This is because they are formed over a very long period of time. For example, some fossil fuels like coal, petroleum and natural gas took almost thousands of years for the formation. And we already know that here it is a limited stock. The availability is very less. So what we have to do? We have to use it smartly. But in case if we overuse it and if it gets over, then it is completely exhausted. So then again it takes thousands of years to form. That is why it cannot be renewed within a short period of time. There are some more examples for non-renewable resources. They are iron, gold and silver. They can be recycled but they cannot be regenerated. And the third one is on the basis of the level of development. It is further divided into potential and actual resources. Then what are potential resources? For example, in present we have a resource and we have not used it completely and it is not exploited. And this could be utilized in the future. These are known as potential resources. One such example for the potential resources are Rajasthan and Gujarat in India have huge potential for wind and solar power generation. But they have not been fully tapped until now. Tidal and geothermal energy are other examples of potential resources. And the next one is actual resources. They are assessed means evaluated. Their quality and quantity determined and which are being used at present by humans are called actual resources. Some examples for the actual resources are coal deposits found in Jharkhand and crude oil deposits in West Asian countries. And the fourth category is on the basis of distribution. It is further divided into ubiquitous and localized resources. Ubiquitous resources. What do you mean by ubiquitous means present or appearing or found everywhere. So here the resources that are found everywhere. For example, the air we breathe are called ubiquitous resources. These are abundant and easily available. And what do you mean by localized resources then? The resources such as iron ore, copper and gold that are found only in specific places. They are called localized resources and these resources are limited and exhaustible. And you know children, the distribution of natural resources on the surface of the earth is irregular and uneven. It is because it depends on the various physical factors like terrain, climatic conditions and altitude. Some places may be rich in minerals while other might have fertile soil. For example, in India, the great northern plains have fertile alluvial soil and abundant water from rivers like the Ganga and the Yamuna. On the other hand, Bihar and West Bengal have rich wealth of minerals. Then why do we need the resources? They help in the development of agriculture, trade, commerce and industry. The unequal distribution of these resources influences the distribution of population. This is the reason why Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal have a high density of population. So children, 
this is the end of our today's session let's meet again in our next session and learn about the another two resources thank you children